Hello there, and welcome back to the Chaps Guide, the channel where we take you on a journey of exploration into men's style, self-development, and personal grooming. And of course, we often review fragrances here. And today, I'm going to review a fragrance which I've been looking forward to talking to you about for quite some time, because I was born in 1970. So I kind of came of age in the 1980s and 1990s. And this fragrance was everywhere during that time. And of course, I'm talking about Drakkar Noir, a fragrance by Parisian perfumier uh, Guy La Roche, which this, this was, you know, if I could go back in Doctor Who's TARDIS into the 1980s, and this was released in 1982. So it was very much in its zenith period in the sort of mid to late 80s and 90s. This was everywhere. If you went into those sort of, you know, seedy nightclubs of the era, you know, the sticky carpets, the neon lights, all that sort of thing. This is what you'd smell on all those sweaty young men who were trying to be noticed by the young ladies of the era. And uh, yeah, I, I remember it vividly. I, in fact, I never owned it as a younger person. It's only in later life that I've come to appreciate it. So today I'm going to talk to you about Drakkar Noir. And uh, even though it's been, you know, extensively reviewed, you might think, what more can anybody add to the conversation? Well, I'm going to do my best today, but let's see how it marketed itself in the 1980s and 1990s. Okay, what do you think of that? Feel the power was the tagline which Dracanua marketed itself under, and it, it absolutely went for the hyper masculine, alpha male, you know, it knew what it was it was trying to do. In the 1980s, 1990s, this was the era of Miami Vice, of ostentatious uh, demonstrations of one's wealth, of, you know, all that sort of thing. People drove fancy, hyped up sports cars, which were very much in your face. And their fragrances match that. It's hard to relate to that now smelling this in the modern era, because, you know, we can't equate to the era that this came into being uh, when, it, when it first was created. But yes, it's a hyper masculine fragrance which is designed for people who are not afraid to be a man's man. So let's give it a try and let's have a look. Right, so I actually shaved this morning and, and uh, used this as my cologne for the day, so it's been on my skin for a while. But I will just refresh myself. A couple of squirts on the back of the hand. Whew. And I have to say, you know, this is an unmist unmistakable fragrance. When you smell it, and there's a lot going on, you know, even though I say it's this sort of blunt instrument that we used to use to batter women over the head in, uh, in the nightclubs of the 80s and 90s when I was, you know, an adolescent and coming of age. Actually, now I smell it in later life with a much more, I'd say, cultured nose. Um, it's got a lot going on. It's, it's described as... And I'd agree, it's an aromatic fougere, you know, it's a, a fougere I mean, in fern, you know, greeny, uh, lots going on within the fragrance. And yes, it's, it's quite an interesting, fresh and clean fragrance. Um, there are so many different accords within this fragrance that it's hard to pin them down. But absolutely, certainly, there's lavender, there's woodsiness, there's floral. I'm not going to break it down into the head, the mid and the base. There's so much going on. It's probably about, if I've, I've looked at the accords, and there's probably about 15 different uh, indicated ingredients here, which is detectable to the nose. But for me, I'm just going to describe it as quite a visceral, fresh, uh, sporty fragrance, which, yeah, I say it transports me back in time to the 80s and 90s, as soon as I smell it. But actually, it doesn't equate too badly into the modern era. I think it can. It can be worn in the modern era quite adequately. You know, it is a retro fragrance and people describe it as smelling incredibly dated. 
But I think once smelled, never forgotten. That's a good thing. You know, you, you never forget uh, Drakkar Noir. Interestingly, the name uh, Drakkar uh, relates to the name for a Viking ship uh, of some description. So, you know, it's all designed at masculinity, at strength, at confidence. And actually, you know what, when I, when I, I apply this stuff, and I, I apply it rarely, I have to say, it is quite an old fragrance. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's transition to the modern world hasn't been without some sort of retro throwbacks. Yes, that's true. But when I really want to feel super confident and masculine and, you know, I want to go out and perform my very best at a presentation or a meeting in work, I actually apply this because it's one of those fragrances that lifts my soul when I wear it. It does something to me anyway. And of course, that's because I'm from this era and it puts me in mind of, you know, those early days of my young adulthood when I wore this. And yeah, it's, it's nostalgia, I think. Yeah, it does well for me. So let's talk about its various attributes and how that equates into the modern world. Well, first of all, when could you wear it seasonally? I think this would perform better in the cooler months because it is quite an imposing fragrance. Um, although it's fair to say the, this version, which I bought probably a year or so ago from Amazon, um, it's the modern formulation, all right? So many people will say it's a pale imitation of the classical uh, formulation from many years ago in its early days. Uh, and that's probably true. You know, things change, different ingredients replace others as they no longer are available or companies get taken over. Um, and this, this isn't the hyper powerhouse that it probably was in the 80s and 90s, but it's still got a bit of a punch to it. Um, so seasonally, I think it's going to be best worn in the cooler months where we tend to favour stronger, denser fragrances. So yes, definitely not in the summertime. I would say this is too um, imposing a fragrance to wear in the summer. It would feel heavy and cloying if you were wearing it in just, you know, your, your shorts and a t-shirt perhaps you know it's just too dark and ominous for me it's more of you know a winter fragrance um when uh let's have a look. what what uh, age would i suggest people wear this i'm going to say 35 plus uh, not just because i'm obviously in my early 50s and I would have no hesitation in wearing it. But I think if you're under 35, it might be a bit of a parody. You know, you, you almost smell like you're, you're dressing up uh, to represent the 80s and 90s. I think this probably suits men who are perhaps a little bit older, who are, you know, yes, quite confident, quite masculine, not afraid to smell like that as well. So it's got that going for it. What time of day would I suggest you wear it? Well, um, I'm going to say this is going to be an evening fragrance for me. It's the sort of thing I would wear when I was going into very masculine, um, you know, uh, male dominated perhaps situations. If I was going to meet some chaps down at the sports club for a game of pool or some chaps down the bar after a rugby game, after you've had a shower you could apply this meet the your gentleman acquaintances in the in the bar of the club for a, for a drink perhaps afterwards this would suit very well i don't think i'd wear it on a date night um, because it may be just that little bit too retro bit dated and your your potential partner perhaps your date might uh, be a little bit overwhelmed by it because it is quite you know quite a strong powerful fragrance um, so yes and, and as regards to that, I wouldn't wear it on special occasions. I wouldn't be wearing this on my wedding day or to, you know, an arrangement where I'd been asked to uh, be introduced to the Pope uh, in, a, in a meal out in a pub or something like that. I wouldn't do that. I would perhaps reserve it for less formal occasions because after all, it's a 1980s masculine, you know, fragrance. It's, it's not ideal for the modern era in those perhaps more thinnest situations. Uh, let's have a look, what else can I tell you? What's the projection, the longevity like? The projection and longevity are medium, right? In, the, in days gone by, when I didn't own this fragrance actually, people will tell you this was a powerhouse. This was up there with Corum and the other big hitters of that era. As I say, it's been reformulated probably many times and it doesn't have that pizzazz anymore. I applied this this morning and within two hours, um, I asked my wife for her opinion of it because you know I, I knew I'd be speaking to you chaps today and I wanted to have some third party 
feedback on the fragrance and she could barely detect it on me until she got really up close and it, it was essentially a skin scent after only two hours after application so it's not a you know it's, it's not a powerhouse fragrance anymore those days are gone for this uh, this current formulation but that might be to its advantage you could consequently wear it in the office because you know unless you're really up close to somebody you're not going to offend them with this um, and it, you know it, it's you could wear it because it's not some sort of big hitter it's not going to offend people if you're going to be in a car for a long journey with somebody you know you're not going to turn their stomach because this is so strong um, so yes there is it's not huge longevity it's not huge projection but it's there you know it's there in the background uh, and it's there when you I can smell it on my skin now and I applied it three or four hours ago now so it works rather well Talking about third-party comments, um, mostly people will say it's a pleasing, fresh-smelling fragrance. Um, I wouldn't say fresh personally, but I've had the comment it does smell quite fresh. It's not barbershop, I would say personally, but it's got a, an element of traditionality to it. Um, I'd say, strange as it might sound, it smells quite sporty. It's the sort of fragrance you might expect people who've just been to the gym or just been playing a team sport to apply in the changing rooms after they've had a shower and then go on with the rest of their lives. For me, it, it smells like that, fresh and sporty and, you know, changing room chic, if you want to call it that. That's where it, uh, it fits in, into my uh, olfactory um, interpretation. So what else can I tell you? The, what does it look like? Well, here we are. It is, it is, if nothing, a triumph to the 1980s. And I don't think the bottle and the marketing has changed in any way. It's uh, ominously all black and it's, you know, it's quite simple. It's got Dracar Noir in very identifiable font on the, on the front of the bottle. It's an Eau de Toilette. Um, I'm not aware that it comes in any other form of strength, you know, Eau de Parfum or anything like that. But the Eau de Toilette, quite pleasant. Um, just indicating it's from Guy La Roche. This is a 100 milliliter bottle made in France. So yes, it is French. What's the vaporizer look like? It's all black, as you can see. Even the vaporizer and the, and the sort of, um, the, the fixtures are black. Nice little vaporizer. Just a bit more in the hand. Lovely, absolutely lovely. It's quite aromatic, actually. I don't know if I said in the accord, it, there's an element of quite a lot of herbs there. I'd say a bit of pine. Definitely a bit of pine. Here in the outdoors, it accentuates it rather lovely. Um, so yeah, very black, very simplistic in many respects, monochromatic, black and white. Um, and yeah, it looks like something from the 1980s. But again, it is quite unique. You don't see this anywhere else. And the bottle, uh, rather the box, um, you know, yeah, very much following the marketing which was all around everywhere at the time for Drakkar Noir. Again, same font, um, slightly sort of textured box with a little slash of red through it, which was very much part of its um, identity back in the day. So yeah, pretty good, all rather simple. What is the value proposition like? Well, it's valued pretty lowly, I think, for what you get. 100 milliliter bottle, 25 quid from Amazon. I think it was sub 25 pounds. I think I paid about 23 pound 95. So not an expensive uh, uh, fragrance at all, really. And you know, if you like a bit of retro, you were perhaps uh, active in the 80s and 90s, this might be a direction you want to take. If you don't want to spend a pile of money, this will give you those memories back and uh, you will be able to wear it in daily life. So, you know, it, for, as a value proposition, I think it makes good sense. Some might say it's a little cliched in the modern era that feel the power, masculinity, you know, all about the 80s and 90s. You know, does it equate well? No. Yeah, it doesn't really. We've moved on as a race, as a society. But the fragrance, I still like it. But that's just me, perhaps. <laughs> Within the black, there is a power. Dracon Noir. The men's fragrance by Guy La Roche Paris. Now I like to think what character, real or fictitious, would wear the fragrance? Who for me embodies this smell? And it's got to be, I've said it already, it's Miami Vice. I can imagine Sonny Crockett, Don Johnson's character in that 
iconic television series, you know, as he drives around in his, um, his Ferraris with the pastel clothing of the era with his Rolex and all the other ostentatious things which they had in that series, you know, the loud, booming soundtrack, I just imagine him reeking of Dracar Noir. Such was the masculinity and the strength of that character. Uh, so yeah, that's what I think. In summary, it's a throwback to another era long gone, but I think it's still got a place. You can wear Dracar Noir today, not just ironically, you can wear it if you like fresh, sporty fragrances, which are a little bit dark, a little bit menacing, reminds you of the era, quite complex, you know, quite herbal, quite, uh, yeah, there's lots going on in here. It's a little bit of something for many different people, but it can be brash, it can be imposing. It's what you want it to be. It depends on your nose. So give it a try, why not? Well, I hope you've enjoyed this review today on Dracar Noir by Guy La Roche. If you have, I would encourage you to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button as well. That way you won't miss any of our future material. And don't forget, leave me a comment in the comments section below. If you've got an 80s or 90s classic that you'd like me to try, bring it on. I love them. That's my favorite era of fragrance. It's the age that I am. Okay. So thanks for joining me today. I'll see you in the next one. And until then, smell good. Take care.